Hello, guys, gallons. Whoa. I see that as I slowly progress through the episodes, the intro becomes worse. Hello, guys, gals, and non-binary pals, and welcome to another installment of the 5 o'clock reboot, where we will be setting your week off right, and slowly continuing to kill our livers for your entertainment, whether that means if it's with friends, or alone, crack open a cold one with the boys every Monday morning. Absolutely. It's what we're here for. It's what we do. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited for what you brought me today. Oh, dude, me too. Uh, this is, uh, this is what, our second installment in the Cider Chronicles? The Chronicles of Cider. Oh, the Chronicles of Cider. I like that. Uh, this is an American tradition, as the label says. Uh, I've been an American all my life, and I've not known of this tradition until now. But uh, American tradition, McKenzie's Hard Cider, Black Cherry. Uh, I'm very excited. I actually got this in North Carolina, because I have i don't think I've ever seen McKenzie's here. It's probably here somewhere, but I've never seen it. It's probably here somewhere. I, I've never heard of it, honestly. Oh. I, uh, this is, I'm pretty excited about it. This is company uh, based out of New York. It is a naturally flavored and gluten-free product. Wow. Oh yes, and the the label's really uh, the label's really cool too. Like it's just it's very plain. Uh, very plain Jane, and it looks good. I, yeah, I like it. Like it, it was enough to attract me. Uh, whenever I was talking to you about, I was like, hey, pick one. Um, the other choice was a local brewery in North Carolina called... Oh, if I would have known that, I would have told you to get that one. Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We can do that again soon because I have a very special friend, girlfriend, uh, who will be coming home this upcoming weekend. And she, can, I can ask her to pick up a couple sixers on her way. A very special friend. Um, wait a minute. She's going to kill me. Girlfriend. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, this is... It smells really good. It smells good. Well, let me crack one open here. Let's get a little bit of that ASMR going. Ooh. Oh. That's... I'm going to cut my voice out of that because that just sounded phenomenal. Oh, oh yeah, dude. End. I'm using uh, my little bottle opener that I'm using is one of those little, uh, like, wallet ninja oh, type the ninja things. Cards? Well, it's... I, I don't remember exactly what the brand is, uh, but I've had this for my... fucking ever. Tell me how the alcoholic leaves his bottle opener in the other room. Because you drink too much liquor and you don't need one. I guess so. Uh, but <laughs> it smells straight up like a cherry candle. Let me let me get a let me get a big old whiff of this. Oh my good golly gracious gracious! Oh good heavens! It, it actually smells like a like a cherry candle. It does smell like, like I a chair kinda, candle. I kind of just want to, like, leave one open in my room and just see what happens. No, oh, dude, for real. Get fruit flies all over the place. Fruit flies and ants. You know, I'm going to tell you something that's going to ruin this scent for you. Think about that cherry-flavored cough syrup. Now, see, I'm weird. As, as everyone has already known this by now. I actually didn't hate taking that medicine as a kid I didn't love it but like whenever I was sick it was always like my go to thing and it was for anything if I had like a headache or anything I would always I would always reach for the bottle this is a good old fashioned bottle of Robitussin or whatever because I hated being sick more than I hated the taste of things because I mean you're a guy you know how it is like yeah. whenever we get sick it is so bad for guys because we're not used to feeling sick we're not used to feeling like crap i mean girls have to deal with it on, on a once a month basis so you know i i you know more power to them for the fact that they're able to handle more than us guys can i mean guys are naturally like, pansies i mean it's just the way it is that is the way that it is and guys are gonna hate whenever we release that secret but whenever we get sick we become so terribly pathetic <laughs> come oh, yeah. back to me rolling into a tub <laughs> defecating and vomiting on myself oh man that's this is this begging is, for death this is literally uh one of the best ways to start this podcast 
<laughs> just Dude. reminding everyone that I've defecated and thrown up on myself. Have you ever heard of liniment? No. Internal liniment? All right, well, let's take a swig of this drink so we can talk about it. Yeah, and I'm going to tell you all about yeah. liniment that cured all your woes. Oh. Ooh. Oh, my God, she cherry. First off, first off, I'm going to start sounding like an actual review channel here. But the design of the bottle, the design of the bottle as I went to take a drink, like, I don't know, it just felt right. It oh, didn't yeah. feel like I was taking a drink out of a beer bottle. It actually, like, fit to my lip, and I was able to take, like, a big swig out of that. That's Oh, yeah, no, I get that. Also, uh, here, I'm going to get really close to the mic, a little bit more of that ASMR. Like but, good old-fashioned. But, but listen. Did you hear that? Oh, that is good. I didn't hear it, but I'll hear it in post. Dude, that was actually some very... Like, the cherry flavor actually comes out more in this than it did with the Bimbel, or Bimbel. Yeah, the Bimbel did not... It, it had, like, hi, I'm Cherry. This one is, like, nice to meet you. I'm Cherry. I fucked your sister. Yeah, no. Uh, also, oh my god, is this the spelling of McKenzie, like, for the real McKenzie's the band? Maybe. Because McKen McKenzie spells it a whole bunch of ways. I've already told you about, about my ties into McKenzie. Because there's like McKenzie, 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 things like that. Oh my god, this is the spelling of the real McKenzie, like the McKenzie from the real McKenzie's. So all I can think of is a Scotsman right now, like being like, that ain't! But like... Well, that, that's what kind of threw me off, because it said an American tradition, but McKenzie is a Scottish name. Well, you gotta think about it. Uh, listen, American tradition really is just an amalgamation of traditions from all over the, the world. True, the melting pot. I did forget about that. Now we're... It is, you know, that that's what we are, man. But anyway, the flavor, absolutely phenomenal. I'm probably going to get tripsy trash tonight. But anyway. I mean, it's only 5%, though. You'd be amazed at how little of these it takes. Yeah, fair enough. This we'll is, see how it goes. This is the Jolly Rouge we're talking about. The Jolly Rouge. I was actually thinking about that song today. For good reason. Because it's bad. Because, like, I... I well, because, like, I, w I was just kind of, like, sitting at work today. I was on position for a while. And I was just kind of, like, to, to pass the time, I'll just start singing sea shanties in my head. Absolutely. And then eventually, they'll go from my head to my mouth and out. And people kind of look at me weird, like, why the hell is he singing about a, a cider? What the fuck? He's over here freaking out. He's like, I'm landlocked! I'm landlocked! We're a half seas over on the Jolly Rouge! Oh, my God. Uh, so, for but, those... Uh, for those of you at home who uh, are are not familiar, the Jolly Rouge is a song uh, that the Dreadnoughts, uh, a band uh, from the summers up in Canada, I believe, uh, yep. released on an album that is focused on sea shanties, um, and it's about cider. Uh, also, the McKenzie thing I was talking about. There's a band called the Real McKenzies. Uh, you should check both of these bands out, by the way. If you if you like sea shanties check out the dreadnoughts if you like kind of like punk rock type deal be sure to check out the real mckenzie's it's an old scotsman singing punk it's pretty badass we should get them to sponsor this video <laughs> this video is sponsored by <laughs> this video is sponsored by the real mckenzie's they have a song dude it's 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 a great song it's called fuck the real mckenzie's <laughs> and i'm like oh, whenever you is... become so meta you insult yourself oh no it's not insulting it's like, oh, it's like, uh, let's see here. What's the lyrics? It says, uh, yeah, they say the fuck the real McKenzie. They sing the chorus and they're like, maybe not the Irish Rovers. Tom fucked them good enough. Definitely the Rum Jacks and those something riot. Uh, it's like, fuck us all together or fuck us one by one. Fuck the real McKenzie's. Fuck it. We'll be fun. Okay. Yeah. I, I misinterpreted because I, I just thought it was like, fuck the real McKenzie's. Oh, not. same. Hey. Fuck the real McKenzie's. Yeah, the last <laughs> the last chorus is uh the last chorus is uh <laughs> it's like a fuck us all together or fuck us one by one. Fuck the real McKenzie's. Fuck us till we're done. <laughs> it's so bad. Good band. Good I band that. though. I uh I've been I've been trying to figure out much more bands because I I never actually pay attention to band names. The only real reason why I know specific band names is if I've been 
listening to them for long enough or I have a specific album that I listen to. Or if I had like a favorite song by a favorite artist. So like, obviously I know Johnny Cash. I know Dolly Parton. I know Coldplay because I'm a, I'm a white guy. Uh, Korn was one of my favorite ones as a kid. Loved Korn. Uh, my favorite uh, album was See You on the Other Side. Um, and it's just a, a plethora of different ones that I know of. Uh, people will hate me for this, but I actually enjoy Nickelback. Nickelback is a good band. They make good songs. If you don't like Nickelback, you're just part of those people who just hated it for no reason. They make some actual good music. This Afternoon. Everyone's Everyone loves This Afternoon. Or Rockstar. People... People love I Want to Be a Rockstar. They they actually it turned it into Rockstar? the... They actually did a sea shanty version of it. Did they really? They did it to the tune of Weller Man. Because we all... Because we all just want to be big rock stars and live in hilltop houses driving 15 cars. I need to... I need to find... If you find that... Actually, could you send that to me? Yeah. Because that... I need to hear that. Oh, for sure. But, uh... Because... I, I always listened to just whatever sound good to me at the time. I didn't even know what Nickelback was. The Dark Horse album was one of my favorite albums. Uh, what other bands do I listen to usually? I listen to basically anything video game related to. Uh, Parov Stellar was one of my favorites. He did most of the soundtrack, if not all of the soundtrack, for Beyond Atlantis 2. Uh, there's also the people who made the soundtrack for... Uh, I don't remember the names of them, but they made the soundtrack for Shadow of the Colossus. Yes. Such such a good such a good soundtrack. And then also for uh, Death Stranding, which was Low Roar. Low Roar made some really good music. Also, uh, the guy who composed literally all of the music for Star Wars, John Williams. Really? Yeah, John Williams is... is well, he's the main conductor for like most of the scores. Now, the new stuff doesn't really use John Williams... People like me can tell the difference. Other people can't really tell the difference. It doesn't have that John Williams flair. So John Williams is the but man. There's, there's so many tiny artists that I know of and big bands that I know of. But that's only because I like their music so much that I paid attention to who they are. Like Tenacious D. Tenacious D, I knew who they were almost immediately because Jack Black, they're a fantastic band. They have a movie. What's not to know about Tenacious D, you know? Yeah man uh oh uh i don't really know all that many groups uh there, there's a few that i know uh, like uh i've heard of tenacious d never i haven't really listened to much of their stuff you know i mean i'm a I, you know i do like jack black uh, but I, i've i've seen more of his acting more so than I've, his music um, yeah a lot of people have now you were talking about uh, you mentioned johnny cash i was the first one you were like i know johnny cash do you know Culture Wall? I believe that I do, but I do believe that I know him for a different reason than what you know him from, of what you might ask me. If I remember correctly, I'm going to look this up right now, but I believe that there's a song that I have on my YouTube music that, and yes, I use YouTube music. It's more handy and there's more music and I can get whatever I want. <laughs> um, but there's there's one specific song that I listen to that that is from him, potentially, and it's also with the Dead South. The Dead South is phenomenal. Johnny Boy's Bones. Let me see, John. Yeah, Johnny Boy's Bones. Yeah, didn't even. <laughs> yeah, that that was such a good, such a good song, and I just like happened on it because I listened to the Dead South once or twice. Because in Hell I'll Be in Good Company is one of their best songs that they made it's so catchy and it's so good and then i was just like after you listen to a certain amount of your playlist after it ends it'll play things that you think it thinks that you'll like and it played that and i mean it sounds good it plays good it, it is about the civil war so some people will get upset about that but you can go screw off because it's it's, it's music get over it but it was so good i enjoyed every ounce of that song and i even played it on repeat while I was at work once and I was just kind of like humming along to it while I was serving people alcohol guess how old he was whenever he recorded that song 30 20 years old 
20 years old. Yeah, and that was released. That was released in 2015. What? Coulter Wall. Yeah, the Wall. 20 years old. 20 years old. Man, what do I got to do to get a voice like that besides smoke a pack a day? I don't know. He does a song called The Devil Wears a Suit and Tie, so I think I know what he did to get that voice. I've heard that one. Oh, that's such well, a probably. good one. Uh, and uh, another one that he does that I really You just like. reminded me of Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? Oh my gosh, <laughs> the movie. Dude, I love that movie. Based uh, That movie's based on The Odyssey. The Odyssey. If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whenever you think about that, it's so cool to watch it, you know? Uh, it's such a good draw movie. Draw the... You know, draw the, you know, like, because you can see everything. Uh, which I wish that there were more movies made like that. You know, like retelling of like really old stories, just in different genres. Well, if you remember in the last episode, we did talk about uh, Treasure Planet, which was talking about Treasure Island, but yes. it had to do with futuristic pirates. But there's some of that stuff out there. Because Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? First off, again, fantastic soundtrack. I'm a man of constant sorrow. If you don't know who what that is, you've never watched a good movie. It's so good, and everyone knows who, who like, um, now that I'm thinking about him, I can't think of his name. George Clooney? George Clooney. Uh, everyone knows who George Clooney is, If he's whether or not he's Batman, if he's playing in Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, if he's literally in anything else. But the most people know him from is Oh Brother, Where Art Thou and Batman. You know, fun. I wasn't hit by a train, damn it. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, I'm a Dapper Dan man. Uh, I'm now, a Dapper Dan man. <laughs> that's right. Uh, fun fact. Um, George Clooney wanted to sing that song so bad. But they, you know, they didn't let him. Uh, the Soggy Bottom Boys, uh, which was a group that sort of, you know, was pulled together for the movie. Uh, the guy that was singing the song, his name's Dan Tominsky. Uh, he released some solo stuff, uh, now, Dan Tominsky, guess who he plays for a lot? Who? Allison Krauss. Uh, oh. Yeah, uh, Allison Krauss in Union Station. Uh, he usually plays guitar for her. Uh, also, guess what else Dan Tominsky... Like, Dan Tominsky's, like poked his finger in a whole bunch of different shit. Guess what else he's been in? Hmm. You know that song, Hey Brother, by Avicii? No. Yes, that's Dan Tominsky. That's a guy that sings... Uh, that's the guy that sings... Oh, uh, man of constant sorrow. Oh my God! Dead ass. Look it Wait, up. Are you telling me? Are you telling me that George Clooney didn't sing "Oh Brother, Where Art Thou"? No. Oof. No, they didn't let him. He think... couldn't. He couldn't hold the note long enough. Or couldn't hold the oh. note well enough. I thought they were like just not gonna let him. Like the song wasn't going to exist, so he was not going to sing the song. But I guess I. I, I don't know. No, he uh, he was like he was like I can do it. I can do it. And then he tried, and they were like, no. So we're gonna bring in some bluegrass no, boys. Can't. And, you we're know. gonna we're gonna get you to lip sync to it, and it's such a good song too. It's like if if anyone knows anything about the movie, that's what they remember it for. That and my bona fide fiance. I remember for R U N N O F T. R U N N O F T. Yeah. Also, Ricky Skaggs' wife was in that movie. Oh. Huh. Yep. I th- what's what's your favorite scene from that movie? My favorite scene from that movie. Um. Oh, uh, whenever they're in that uh, that theater, right? And they think oh, yeah. they think he's been turned into a to a horny. We thought he was a toad. And then, um, John Goodman, you know these like, give me up the little frog in his hand, throws it against the tree. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> He's just like, ah! Ah! Yeah. Welcome to the 5 o'clock reboot, the retelling of all your favorite movies podcast. <laughs> We're not really a drinking channel. We just like to talk about movies that we've seen. Which is just a rare... Yeah, actually, this has been a ploy the whole time. We've been trying to get you guys to listen for the drinks, but we're actually getting you guys to watch good movies. Which, this is a rare situation, because this is a movie that I've seen. <laughs> because... Oh, yeah. 
I mean, who hasn't seen it though? Anyone who has their bearings about good movies, my uh, my dad, who's not my dad but is my dad, had a book that's like a thousand and one movies you need to see before you die. And I, the movie, the book came out I think before the movie did, so it should have been a thousand and two movies that you should see before you die because that movie is definitely one of them. Oh. Never even heard Indiana of the book. Jones and Star Wars is on those. Well, golly, what am I say? So, I, I actually saw, um, oddly enough, it was only the same bits and pieces of uh, Indiana Jones and the Raider of the uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. That is actually specifically the title inside of the book that you need to watch. Uh, now, the reason I've seen that is because whenever I was working at the tomb, uh, whenever I first applied and like had my interview and shit. They had uh, a Scooby-Doo movie playing in the lobby, you know, because Mm -hmm. it was a family-friendly attraction, you know. know, Who's not going to love Scooby-Doo? But we got some bad uh, trip advisors that were like, oh, it was too childish, you know. Oh, so you had to get a little more edgy. I mean, even, you know, there's a dead guy inside, but it's too childish. What the hell? (laughs) There's Uh, a literal sarcophagus with a dead guy inside. Too childish. And you die. And a literal skeleton. You know, you're like, all right, we got to find the professor, and then it's like, it's not just like, oh, well, you know, here's something secret that you can find. No, attention is drawn to it, and the room goes pitch black, and light, like that area lights up because he's like, and that guy over there, and it's like a dead dude. Too childish. He's he's been waiting for his first date. Uh, but no, so they were like, all right, fine, we're not showing Scooby Doo anymore. So it was just Raiders of the Lost Ark on repeat, but I would only catch the same bits and pieces of the movie. <laughs> because, like, be- I guess because of, like, how times would fall with my tours, or, like, even on slow days when I wasn't really having any tours, like, I would watch it for a minute, and then I would, like, start shooting the shit. So, I remember when he's like, it hurts here, and here, and here, and here, and then he points and at here. his dick, and he's like, suck it, you know. Uh, <laughs> suck it good. And then there's the part where, <laughs> because I don't remember any of the lines, <laughs> So, like, all I remember seeing is just like, oh, they're running away. She hopped into a basket. Now the basket's getting carried. Holy hell. And then uh, I remember the scene where uh, Harrison Ford got the shits and shot the guy. Yeah. Which wasn't supposed to happen. Guys guys swinging around the sword, and he's just like, they were actually supposed to have a big fight there. Yeah, I, I remember that, but they were just like, "This is Indiana Jones." Well, no, like, Har- Harrison Ford had the like had like the shits in a bad way. Like that face that he made, like oh, I gotta go shit. Like, I, like <laughs> if you look, that's the face that he makes. Pull, put that, put that fucking frame up on the screen. You see that, friends? You see that, friends and family? That's a face oh, God, that says he's gonna make me hunt it down. That's a face <laughs> that says I gotta shit. <laughs> That's a face that I got a shit. <laughs> and they were like, no, I, and they were like, that's a great take. So they kept it in the movie. <laughs> I love, I love, I love, but like, it's so perfect because that's that's something Indiana Jones would do too. Because the guy's like, shoo, 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 and he's just like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he just turns around like, where's that girl at? But in actual, he's like, where's the shitter? <laughs> yeah, well, I mean. We don't know what he's into. It could have been the same thing. It could have been like, where's that girl at? She said shit where's on my chest. Where's that girl at? She said shit She's on She's in a basket. <laughs> she said shit on my chest at 5.30. No sooner, no later. <laughs> she said shit on my, my chest at 5.30. It's 5.29, and I'm a man of timing. I'm a man of my word. Let me just kill this guy real quick. <laughs> man, could you imagine? Like, that, like the, that you're just so focused on. Like that, like if that's your king, and you're just so hyper fixated on it, you're like, I'm gonna end this man's life real quick, just like right now, so I can. <laughs> Hold on, honey. <laughs> Where were we? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So I uh, I like to tell people that I'm like, uh, cause you you gave me the phrase. Boss makes a dollar, I make a dime. That's why I shit on company time. Absolutely. I emphasize this. If I'm ever, if I'm ever anywhere, if I'm at work and I gotta shit, I'm gonna shit. 
First off, it's a natural bodily function. You're not going to get mad at me for having to go take a shit like 15 times a day. Well. All right. 15, I eat like garbage. <laughs> 15 times a day is a medical problem. No, I just eat like garbage. So like it just sort of, it slithers its way out. So like last night, so a little known fact, if you eat a lot of mints, it's going to give you weird shit. Really? It, specifically the lifesavers. If you eat a lot of lifesavers, it's going to give you some radical farts and some hard shits. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's either that or there's something wrong with me because every single every single time I eat a fuck ton of of, of uh, lifesaver mints, I shit like twenty times a day. Dude, why do you no sh- joke? Why are you shoveling lifesavers into your mouth? Because they're good. I know they're good. They're one at a time. I don't. I'm not a barbarian. I didn't know if you just eat them one at a time. I didn't know if you were like reaching your hand into. Them into a bag of like lifesavers and taking the time to open all of them individually yeah i was gonna say they're individually wrapped i'm not about to do that shit i'm too fucking lazy like individually unwrapped 10 of them and like put them in your mouth like popcorn or chips i eat chips in an unhealthy manner and i've realized that Uh, no (laughs) no i wouldn't i'm i may be a man of focus and once i get my mind set on something i might get that thing done but i'm not about to individually unwrap a bunch of lifesavers just to put them into my mouth in the fistful. I don't have enough time for that. They're literally going to go one by one into my mouth where they belong because I'm a man of focus and a man of passion. The title of the episode. If I'm going to eat a lifesavers, I'm going to eat it right. The title of the episode, <laughs> Fisting My Face, but it's Darren. okay. It's lifesavers. Fisting, fisting my face, but it's okay. I was going to say Derek, the man of passion, fisting his face of lifesavers. That's what's going to be on the documentary. Derek, the man of many faces, the man of passion, shoving lifesavers into his face, shoveling it by the fistful for your entertainment. And he's okay with shitting 15 times a day. Once he shits that 16th time, once he shits that 16th time, the savings is gone. Then it's a problem. The world has been fed. (laughs) The world has been fed. Lifesavers. Oh, man. Uh. But, no. All right, so I got a question. How do you eat chips? Um, it kind of depends, because, like, a normal person will eat them, like, one by one, you know? I'll just, like, take one chip at a time, but it depends on how impatient I am. It depends on what I'm doing, because if, if I'm really not here for this, and if I, got, if I got stuff to do, I will straight up just stick, I will take my hand like a shovel, stick it into the bag, and start raking it into my mouth as not a whole lot because I still have to like be able to get it all into my mouth but I will shovel it into my mouth and sometimes I'll even like I'll go for the the C clamp maneuver where you take your hands your fingers you put it in a C you stick it in and you just try to grab as many as possible that's mainly Doritos because they like to line up single file you know so you go in there you'll grab those and start shoveling those guys in but you eat chips individually to enjoy the flavor but I don't, sometimes I don't have time to enjoy the flavor. I'm trying to eat. So I just do the C-clamp maneuver or the shovel maneuver. And I'll just, sometimes I'll even double hand it, shovel with one hand, C-clamp in the other, and just start cramming it into my gob just as fast as possible. Oh just God. so that I can have food in my belly. I love how your, I love how your shovel is a knife hand. Dude, this <laughs> is, so... I was raised in like a, I was raised in a military family starting way back before even like Civil War times. Okay, so like my family's been in wars since forever. I can't be in wars because I'm fucking blind and I don't want to waste anyone else's time with that. So the knife hand is something that's been in our family for a while. I remember the first time my grandfather got mad at me and that was the first thing he did. He like yelled at me and took his little knife hand and put it in my face and it was set in stone. This is the command prompt. You're going to listen to me. And it is such a useful tool because if you watch like angry cops, if you've ever seen him like actually at work and yelling at somebody, the second the knife can comes out, people shut up and they start listening to him because he just, he also has like a crooked finger. So it's kind of weird. I don't know. So like whenever he goes in for it, his finger's just kind of weird. So people probably are kind of jutted by just focusing on that finger for trying to find out what the fuck it's doing. But the knife hand has like a certain power to it because the second you bust your hand out, it's not like there's no bounce. There's no motion. It is just jutted out 
and it stops. Like, are you going to try to argue with someone who just put all five fingers into your face? No. You're going to shut up and listen. You know, you know what five fingers in your face can do? They can give you a hell of a lot of lifesavers. They can do. Yeah, they can. One at a time, or all five, buddy. Or a lot of life enders. Jesus. Like, I've, uh... Oh I God, suckle I on the middle of it just to put them onto my rings. Like, on my fingers, like, rings. Just to beat the shit out of people with lifesavers. I had a buddy of mine, Matt. <laughs> uh, Matt, if you find this, you're, you're fucking awesome. I remember I remember you and I working together at the Roadhouse. We were fucking buddies. We're boys. Uh, you remember this, Matt. You and I actually had a, like realization of how small the world actually is uh, over this guy not long ago um well, he was wanting to go into the military because his family's been in the military for a long time as well and whenever he was mad like at work that's what he would do like if somebody like if he was like getting on like if he was like getting on somebody because they were being a fucking jackass he would like pull out the knife and like he'd get in their face and he was he was a tall kid he was like you know he was skinny but he was he was a big guy you know? Yeah. Like, whenever you have to look up at somebody and they're looking down at you with the knife hand, it's over. With the knife, yeah. <laughs> like, you, you can't argue from that point forward. I, I do find myself to do that. If I ever get into, like, an actual heated argument, the knife hand comes out. And I, I have noticed it's power. People will stop talking the second you, you this, especially if you're making a, a valid point and you're getting on to them. You get up in their face and you put, you don't put the knife hand in their face unless you're like getting in their face if you're getting real close and it's not even in their face it's like to the side and you're jutting it back and forth to make sure that you're you're what you're saying is clear to them but other than that it's right into their chest you're either an inch away or you're touching them on your chest just to show them that you're not afraid to touch them it's it's a power move it's kind of like taking a glock pulling it out and pointing it at them and calmly explaining to them why you're correct now one of those is uh, illegal Kind of, yeah. K kind, in certain circumstances. I say kind of my ass, unless they've like, unless they are actively like threatening you. One of them's illegal. Yeah, I, I definitely think that they're if they were like, yeah, you need to fold the paper like hot dog, not hamburger, and you pull the Glock out and put it to the forehead. You're like, um, I fold my paper hamburger, thank you. I definitely think you're probably gonna do some jail time and probably lose that gun that you worked so hard to get. Yeah, East Tennessee schools are crazy, man. Uh. East Tennessee schools, buddy. That was daycare. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> Speaking of East Tennessee schools, have you ever listened to like some of the old folks talking about how it was in their day? Yeah. Like, and this wasn't like I'm saying old folks. It's not really old folks. I'm talking like they're okay. I said old folks, but I really shouldn't have said old folks. Um, it's so, like I remember talking to my uncles and shit. You know, talking about school and different things that I was doing. And uh, they were like, "It's crazy now." One of them works in the school system. Uh, they're like, it's crazy now. They're like, you know, if I were to be talking and telling stories to the kids nowadays about how things were whenever I was in school, they would never believe me. You know, he was like, I can remember. Or no, it was my papa. Maybe it was my papa. It was my papa. All the way my papa. Uh, so, I guess kind of old folks. Um, you know, he said, nobody believed me. He says, I remember going to school. And you'd be going hunting with your buddy after school. So you'd take your gun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, your like, gun would just be stowed in your truck or whatever. Well, no, he's talking like elementary school. He's like, we'd ride the bus. Yeah. You know, and I'd have my gun, you know, and the bus driver would be like, oh. all right. Yeah, the bus driver would be like, all right, leave it on here. You know, and they'd leave the gun on the bus, and it'd be there whenever they got back. And they'd get the gun, and they'd go oh. hunting. Man. And nowadays, God forbid you bring anything that even remotely looks like a gun. I almost got in trouble because I... I accidentally had a shotgun shell in my pocket in middle school and it fell out of my pocket trying to retrieve something else from my pocket and the teachers almost shat themselves because they thought I was just going to shoot up the school. First off, it was a spent shell. It's already been shot. So I'm just sitting there looking at them dumbfounded that they're almost like yelling in my face because I just have a spent shotgun shell and I looked at them. I was like, it's from whenever I went to go shooting at a gun range with my friends and they were like you can't have this this is bad da -da 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 -da. are you planning on shooting up they, they straight up asked me like are you planning on shooting up the school i was like why would i do that first off people who who do that are only begging for attention and to be fair and to be honest 
you shouldn't really put those people's names up on the on the on the news or even the internet because that's just going to give them the fame that they they want not what they deserve i i had no reason to go in there and start shooting up schools because there's no reason to do that that's dumb it's pointless and i was like no that's dumb and they're like okay well we're keeping this and um we're gonna get you to are you in your third bottle i was actually just thinking that because i was looking around trying to find where the second or where the first empty bottle went oh my god you are just chugging away man it's so good it is good uh but the they they like kept the shell and whatever they we had like a, they had to call my parents and stuff like that my mom my mom for the first time ever of me fucking up in school was not mad at me she actually got mad at them she was like that was a spent shell the shotgun shell was empty posing no threat to you at all he couldn't have even put it into like a, a lead pipe and hit the back of it with a pin and shot it you guys got onto him about an empty shell now and i now that i'm older i kind of realize like yeah i guess it makes sense in a way because in the same school and this is not a joke in the same week of us in school we had over seven bomb threats seven bomb threats from the same because our, our classes were separated into teams from the same team, which is four classes of the same students, four, team four, had over seven bomb threats. Oh my gosh, dude. It took them two months to find out who it was. And he's a terrorist now. He's labeled as a domestic terrorist. That shit's gonna follow that guy till the day he dies. Uh, whenever I was growing up, you know, I always played, I, I played violent video games. Right, and people always say that violent video games are gonna make you very violent. Uh, I rarely, if ever, have ever gotten into a fight, and even if I did get into a fight, it was for an actual reason. I didn't just go out looking for a fight. Um, I own I own firearms, as is my right as a as a as an American as a living human being. I don't intend to go and harm somebody else because that's stupid I intend to defend myself because if it comes down to your life or mine you know I'm gonna defend my life because I have people that I have to take care of yeah you know well there's it's, there's an, it's one of those things there's an old saying uh, you know sort of like you know people who train martial arts are trained to fight right um, mm. it is oh pardon me um uh you know as you train you know to fight or you know and you know you put yourself in these combat situations in training um you find a peace within within the struggle you know what i mean obviously there's yeah. like the adrenaline's high and and you're you know you're you know you're moving around in, in such ways to avoid to avoid harm while Trying to incapacitate your uh, your target uh, or your attacker or whatever the situation is, but the old saying uh, I think I believe it's a Japanese saying is uh, it's better to be a warrior in a garden rather than a gardener in a war. Mm -hmm. uh, and that makes a lot of sense. And we're not counting Samwise Gamgee <laughs> because that dude is now, the fucking hero of Lord of the. And, and my, um, a saying that my family always taught me, I would much rather be judged by 12 of my peers than carried by six of my loved ones. It's true. And whenever I first heard that, I kind of just thought like, okay, that makes sense. You know, I'd, I'd much rather stand in front of a judge than, you know, be dead. But then it actually hit me. The, the, the saying goes a little more in depth of I would much rather be forced to face potentially serving time rather than having to be carried by people who I should have been protecting and sometimes depending on the situation 
it isn't just going to be your funeral that you're being carried by. Because depending on the situation, you and someone else that you loved and cared about, and your job, Ugh. your job as a person is to protect them. That's your job. And that that's where it kind of like hit on me, is like, you had a job to do, and due to the fact that you decided, I don't need to carry this, I don't need to keep this with me, I don't need to protect myself, you sacrificed your ability to protect others because you wanted to be this this guy, this beacon of light for the person who doesn't care. But my whole thing has always been, I hate firearms, right? I don't like them. They're a tool designed to save or protect, to, to take or save a life. In order to save a life, you have to take a life. That's usually how it goes. But why I keep firearms, why I carry, is because the bad guy doesn't care what I think. Right? Right. So why should I care what other people think about me? Because whenever the shit hits the fan, who's everyone going to look at? The guy has, who has the way to defend everybody, you know? Yeah, I mean, which... We live in a place where everybody can have their opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's that's the, that's one of the good and, things. And that and that and that is great, you know. If your if your opinion is to, you know, like I, I don't want to have one, I don't want to keep one. That's fine. Uh, it's just one of those things of you were you were banking on not being in a situation that you might end up in one day. It's it's the same concept as a condom better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it but if a good lord's willing you'd never you know you never need it like it's one of those things of like yeah like i would rather like people and it's it's the same way with martial arts you know uh you don't you don't train to go look for a fight that's like yeah. that's one of the things they teach you they're like you know uh and, and a lot of them they're like hey if you go and are looking for fights. Like, if you're trying to, like, go out there and, like, just wreck some ass, you know, we're we're not going to teach you. You know, because, mm. like, there is a uh, mental and, uh, for some people, spiritual uh, peace that they, that they find in the, you know, in these arts that they train in, you know, while they are destructive arts, because, uh, you know, a lot, you know, martial arts, like, a lot of martial arts is, you know, how to, you know, it, it's combat skills, you know. Yeah, and it's and it's a tool. It is. And the, the thing that people don't ever focus on is a tool is meant for something. You don't just buy a hammer to go fix your car. You have a tool for a certain thing. You shouldn't look to start... Kind of like what you're saying, you shouldn't go looking for a fight. If you buy a hammer, you shouldn't look to start going to fix things around town. People are going to start getting upset with you. Yeah. Yeah, you can't go. You can't go. You know, hammering people's houses or hammering people's buttholes. But yeah, uh, whenever your house starts falling apart, you're gonna be you're gonna be wishing you had a hammer. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. But either way, man, we're getting into the big topics today. Yeah, that's that went really into the. In, the into the left field, yeah, I'll say the, the area the area we've been trying to stay away from, but it's episode twelve. Yeah. Here we are. Um, now here we are, guys. We made it twelve episodes, unless I cut this out. Now I did realize that uh, I was going to tell you about a medicine earlier. Yes, and I forgot to tell you about it. Uh, I'm not sure if you remember, but uh, you were talking about like you never had an issue taking uh, Robitussin and cough medicines of the like. Yeah. Um, this is a medicine called internal liniment. And it is hell. Um, it's an old medicine. Uh, like, my papa used to take it. My mom used to take it. All this other stuff. My mom was like, I hate taking liniment. She'll take anything but. Uh, but, buddy, I'm telling you right now, it will clear you up and clear you out. As far as your sinuses, oh, your throat, God. everything you got. It's got like topical. 
Oh my god. Well, that's external. There's internal. Simple um, backache, arthritis, sprains, and muscle strains? That's external. Look up internal liniment by Raleigh, uh, Raleigh's internal liniment. Raleigh's? Yeah. R-A-L-E-I-G-H. Uh, apostrophe S. Internal lin... Raleigh's internal liniment by fishpond.com. Let's see here. Uh, some of the original oh, ailment or some of the original oh, no. ingredients. Natural country remedy liniment rubbing oil for an upset stomach digestive discomfort as well as relieving symptoms of the common cold and flu. Internal liniment been tested in time remedy to help relieve stomach cramps, discomfort due to colds and flu developed to support soothing and comfortable feeling for the stomach. This uh oh my oh my god Oh my, the ingredients, cayenne pepper, hemlock seed oil, spearmint leaf oil, other ingredients, water, alcohol, polysorbate. 48% alcohol, so by the way. 48% alcohol. Uh, FDNC red, FDNC brown. Jeez, and crow. Yep. And uh, oh what you would God, do that... is you would take a teaspoon or two teaspoons and you'd put it in a glass. And then you would oh fill God. the glass, uh, fill the glass up the rest of the way with water and sugar. And I, well, that's what I would do. I would use water and sugar, and I'd stir it up, right? And I would use hot water. It had to be hot to dissolve. Uh, and then you would have to chug it. And by God, I'm telling you right now, I felt great afterwards. Yeah, because you already passed on and died. God, you, know, you need another, you need another dose of that stuff. You'd be saying, uh, uh-uh, uh, no. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're not actually... You're still sick, but you're just saying that you're not, so you don't have to take it anymore? Yep. Nah, I, it really did make me feel better, though. It'll clear up a sore throat, uh, a runny nose, stopped up nose, uh, diarrhea, uh, eight, put it in your dick. Uh, <laughs> just insert it? Just just inject it? I'm kidding. Don't try it for eight. This is 5 o'clock reboot saying, do not insert it into your penis. Yes, uh, but, yeah, that, uh, I used to take that. I still do, actually. Uh, if I'm ever sick enough that I'm like, oh my gosh, I really need medicine, then I'll, I'll take some uh, internal liniment. Uh, I'll have to keep that in mind, because what I do nowadays is I will just sleep and drink water. Because, like, your body is meant to take care of itself, you know? It's what it's designed to do. However, if you want to make a quicker recovery, you take medicine. I don't really take medicine anymore. First off, it costs money. Second off, I just don't have the, the, the mental strength to get up and go do it if I'm that sick. But I always keep, like, any kind of in, um, NSAID with me. So any kind of in- anti-inflammatory. Because I'll get headaches, I'll get muscle aches sometimes, just because I work all the time. That's the thing about me, like, the, the men in my family, we thoroughly believe, and this is, like, something that we actually run with, we thoroughly believe that if we don't work, we die. And this was set in stone by my grandfather's father, my great-grandfather. Uh, my great-grandfather worked every single day since he was a child until the day that he retired, like, 63, and I shit you not, three days after he retired... He straight up had a heart attack and died. Oh my gosh. Dead ass. Yeah, there was a... Because he said he said the same thing. Uh, there was actually uh, a lady uh, that I talked to not long ago who said something very similar. Because uh, she, you know, she was getting on up in years and she didn't look like it nor did she act like it. And they were like, hey. Uh, you know, she was like, the secret? Or she was like, you stay young by moving. She said, if you sit still, you'll, you know, you'll grow old. Uh, it's sort of, uh, I guess it's similar to the saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, a rolling stone gathers no moss. Right. Uh, and that, that was the whole thing. Like, the men in my family, we thoroughly believe that. Because the second you stop moving, your body's ready to rest. And we ain't ready to rest, buddy. I still got too much stuff I gotta do. I am finally living a life of interest. Because, like, as a child, I we never did anything. The height of our stuff was we went to a theme park that all the locals went to. That was the height. I haven't, I've never been to Disney or Universal until this year. Well, last year. Last year was the first time I ever went to Disney 
and Universal. And dude, I don't care. I'm going back. I'm, I'm going to get money and go back. I don't care how long it takes. Because the fact that I missed out on that in my childhood, now I'm an adult where I can go and buy Nerf guns and shit whenever I want. Yeah. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to go and enjoy my time there. Because if you're lucky, you're going to live to be about 100. If you're lucky. And by the time you're 100, going to Disney is out of the question. It ain't going to happen. You're going to have heat stroke and die. Unless you're able to, unless you're able bodied. And I'm sure there's someone who's done that. But I have been striving to go back. We, we only went to Universal for Halloween Horror Nights, which we're still going to go do. But we wanted to go to Universal this year. Finally, I'm starting to live the life that I want to live. I'm wanting to learn other languages and start traveling to other countries and go check it out. I want to go to Japan. So I'm starting to try. I, I say that I'm trying to learn Japanese, but it's mainly due to my laziness that I've not gone to learn Japanese yet, <laughs> but I want to become conversational in Japanese before I go and visit Japan because Japan is really cool. The culture is fantastic. It's kind of weird how it's just honor based. And if you dishonor people, you, their suicide rate is like through the roof. It's insane. But going to Japan is like something I want to do while I'm young because Japan is so cool and there's so much to do in Japan. Going to see the sites, checking out some of the traditional stuff that they do, seeing there's some places in Japan where you can straight up watch how samurai make knives or swords and things like that. Holy shit. A thousand folds and all that stuff. It's so, it's so cool. Man, I, I'm wanting to travel as well. Uh, you know, you know where I'm wanting to go? Like, so bad I can't even fucking stand it. Scotland. Yes. Uh, Scotland, and I would go I'm, to Scotland. I'm also wanting to go to Ireland. Uh, the reason I'm wanting to go to Scotland is because uh, my family's clan uh, that we came from, they had, keyword, had, H-A-D, past it, had a castle. Oof. Uh, we were uh, a clan of lowland Vikings. Uh, and uh, the castle was out uh, near Caithness, uh, and there's a little, little tiny like island type thing. Like it's, it's almost as if the land just kind of like split, you know. And there's a little cliff, but you can see the like little patch of land that's just off the shore, or just off the cliff, and that's where the castle stood, um, and. What happened was the head of the clan had promised himself, which, by the way, head of the clan, already married. Mm. Already married to somebody. Had promised himself to a, I think it was French nobleman's daughter. Yeah. uh, For the dowry. You know, for the money. So you're royalty. Mm. Well, you know, well, but, you know, for someone to marry, you know, like, dowry was a big thing then you know it's like hey you marry my daughter and i will pay you a lot of shit um yeah well because they used to they used to use that as a way of like hey continue my family lineage you get money yeah continue my family lineage and this is the best direction that i think it would go because people didn't marry for love like back then <laughs> they married for yeah, status things were a little different back then yeah no we we have it we have it pretty pretty good now um where we are. I wouldn't have been married to anybody. <laughs> they would have been like, uh, we're going to leave this family to die. We're going to leave them there. Yeah. Uh, no, nah, you would have been married. I thought you, uh, sorry, how the internet cut out. Uh, I thought you said I would have been married to anybody. No, no, the exact opposite. They would have looked at me. They would have been like, this guy plays on computers and works his ass off all day. No, no. No, not him. No, I feel like somebody would marry you. But either way. What, like, like Belle Delphine? Oh my god. <laughs> I'd be betrothed to her because she's a fucking gamer girl? No. Oh my god. Dude, <laughs> dude, but you guys could make so much money. Think of all the bath water that you guys could sell together. She sells the gamer girl, she sells gamer girl pee. You sell gamer guy bath water. But she makes the money. I, I honestly, if people would buy it, I'd let her make the money. Buy me a PS5, bitch. No. <laughs> oh my god. But uh, anyway, uh, so he promised himself while already being married, 
uh, to this nobleman's daughter, and he s told them to put everything, put the dowry and the woman on the ship, and sent her to the like most treacherous side of the island, right? Like a place where a ship couldn't make it. Sent them there. Mm. And obviously there was a shipwreck, and she died. And their plan was to go collect the gold, you know, after the shipwreck, because he, he was already married. He wasn't planning on marrying this chick. Well, Nobleman caught wind of this and was like, hmm, shit's fucked. Went and leveled the castle. Oh my god. Yeah. I, uh... That blood's in, I my, discovered... that, that blood's in me, dude. Uh, I discovered that my family, uh, before before my current last name, it was uh, McCord, Ooh. which is a Northern Irish Scottish name. As long as you're not a uh, Keith, you really, know it'll be fine. Yeah, I never really went back very far beyond that. Uh, I've looked at the family crest a couple of times. Some of them use knights, so that means that they were of a knight status. Some of them have crowns, which means that they are royalty. But uh, no one's ever contacted me about anything that I may own or may not own. So I don't know how much of this is true. Because this is stuff that my biological father told me. And that man doesn't know how to tell the truth anyway. So I don't really, I don't really know. Right. Oh, man. Now, this right here is my crest. You may yeah. be able to see on my, uh, I have a tattoo of my, my crest on my arm. I've seen it once or twice, man. You've seen it? Uh... Now this, fuck, oh man, I must be getting drunk, I just cleared my throat on air. Um, but anyway, uh, in Latin, it says, Op Pax Op Bellum, which means either peace or war. And it has a sword, or a hand with a sword raised. Uh, and that is the crest for, for clan gun. Uh, which my last name is not Gun. Uh, my last name uh, is or comes from a Sept Clan Clan Gun. Uh, so how how it all goes is William Gun had a son, right? And a lot of names back then, you know, if you were so and so's son, you know, in, in you know a certain Viking tradition. You know, your name was whatever that person's name was. Son, like Leif Erikson. Uh, Leif Erikson was son of Eric the Red. So it was Leif, the son of Eric, Erikson. Uh, and then I guess things just sort of timed out to where, you know, they either got enslaved by the English or all that and were forced to use different last names. Uh, or certain things just kind of stuck. Like... Last names are weird, man. Yeah, they tend to be that way. Like, like you know how there's like certain traits end up being last name? Like Smith. Al Smith is such a common last name. Yeah. Because of blacksmiths. You know, so so-and-so Smith, somewhere down the line, there's a blacksmith's blood in there. Uh, Baker family was a baker. Now Richardson's the one that concerns me. What's a nickname for Richard? Dick. Dick son. So that means somebody oh. up in that line was an asshole or they had a massive penis long enough to be the namesake for generations to come. <laughs> the dick that transcends generations. Oh! They lift up the skirt an inch or two as we could see. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't think you're near where I am, Derry, but... Derry, I have an idea. Okay. I'm gonna ring a bell. Or do something. I'm, I'm here. To announce the latest segment on the 5 o'clock reboot. It is the 5 o'clock... It is the 5 o'clock games. Sort of like the Highland Games. The five o'clock games. Sort of like the Highland Games, but it's different because it's five o'clock, so it's centered around drinking. Know what I okay. mean? And in this segment, uh, 
Derry and I will be challenged within within our weeks to find a drinking game. If not find one, then to make one up. They may be real. They may be comical. We don't fucking know. You know what I mean? I don't know what mine is that I have, but I thought of a drinking game. And I also think this is a great idea for something for us to come up with because I've never really played drinking games all that much. I've only done it a time or two, and I've had a time. I've had a blast. So maybe we can help you and your friends find a drinking game that y'all can play together while you're listening to the Five O'clock Reboot, um, or just whenever. Uh, now this drinking game, right? is called the good old drink right now Derry, do you want to know how you play the good old drink how do i play the good old drink what you do is you get you and your buddies together and you find like you find a playlist on spotify or like a like certain group or whatever on YouTube or, or some some music streaming service, and you find old timey tunes, right? Like old fiddle tunes that like people have sung to. Mm-hmm. And you take a drink as soon as you start, obviously, or you take a shot as soon as you start. So you're already one in. The fact that you're playing the game, you got to get in it. And from there on, any time that you hear them, like, repeat a verse, right? So let's say there's a song, and they're like, chicken had a wooden leg, wasn't nothing but a little wooden peg, or something like that. If you hear that in one song, and then you hear it in another later, you have to take a shot. And if you like listening to folk music, this is a great time for you and your friends to be jamming, just chilling with some folk music and keeping an ear out. And whenever you hear a verse that repeats, take a shot. Because I found this out while I was on my like while I was on a four hour drive. Um, I listened to a rendition of Cotton Eye Joe that had that somebody sang like just a common folk song like verse that was in Cluck Old Hen. It was in a bunch of other stuff, right? And I didn't realize how much of this stuff just repeated. But there's that. Uh, That's the good old drink. Which is the drinking game of this week. Do we have to participate? Because we're going to be going places quick. Um. Or do they have to participate? Everybody has to participate. Oh god. Derry, you and I... Oh my gosh, dude, this is one for the Patreon. We play some of the drinking games that you and I come up with. Oh no. (laughs) Would that not be fun as fuck? Oh god, we would get so zooted so quick though. Depending on the game. We would find a way to screw each other. I mean, we don't really have to try too hard to find a way. That's true. Oh man, you and I have gotten to be real close over the past few months. Oh my. Man, this is this is a great episode so far. I simply must say. We've been, we've been making work, man. Oh yeah. I'm slightly zooted. What is my battery at? 8%. Oh my fuck. Oh my god. I thought you said it was at 60%. It was. Oh my god. Uh, we'll be fine. Well, if if worse comes to worse, hopefully it saves. This may be a short episode of of, of the five o'clock reboot. Nah, we'll be all right. I'm so excited because I'm actually able to hardcore participate in this episode. I'm already getting there. How many have you had? I've only had two and a half I'm in trouble I'm getting there quickly I'm on four Hmm. Jesus man and I have to work in the (laughs) morning 
You're like you're like one per hour. Da da da. I could drink five, and you're already zooted. I'm having my fucking five, dude. I'm gonna catch up. Don't you worry. Hell or hippity high water, hippity hoppity high water is what I'm saying, man. I'm a frog on the water with a lily pad. Oh my God, Derek, did I tell you the story? Which one? I did not tell you the story. Um, I can't believe I didn't tell this on any of my story times. So, are you aware of Chick-fil-A? I am. Okay. Did you know that Chick-fil-A is just a front for cows? Explain. Oh, buddy, a long time ago. They've been waiting for this moment. You see. Cows, obviously, are getting slaughtered for beef. Mm -hmm. Um, now, the reason this is very important is because the cows, see, cows are very smart. They, there is a secret society of cows, and they have banded together because they want to slow down, uh, of the, on the, of the slaughter of their own kind. So what they did is that there was a secret band of cows, and they were like, oh my god, our friends are getting, like, sent to slaughter, literally, right now. So, what did they do? They said, hey, we're getting sent to slaughter because people are eating us. We have to come up with a way to make people eat other animals so they won't eat us, right? This secret band of cows, like, they have this very special club, you know, they're called the Illuminati, and, you know, like 10 bucks a month is their dues. It's really easy to get in. I can't tell you too many secrets, though, because I'm only a third Don. Anyway... Um, <laughs> the look you just gave me tells me everything that I can see. The Illuminati made my fucking brain hurt. <laughs> the Illuminati. Anyway, <laughs> that's gonna be on a T-shirt. <laughs> you you have no idea. The second that you said it, I immediately was just like, "Oh God, a cow with the Illuminati over its face." <laughs> Illuminati. Kind of like a, kind of like the the picture of Jesus Christ, where he's like got his hand over his heart with the fucking light shooting out of his chest. I was literally a flood of ideas shot into my head just from that single name, the Illuminati. Oh I anyway, I hate it. <laughs> anyway, the Illuminati. Uh, so they came up with a plan to make people eat other animals. They mm -hmm. said, "Hey." We have got to divert the public's attention. What are you? What are you doing? Jerking off. I had to plug in my PC. If the if this is creating an audio issue in the future, deal with it. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll edit am it I getting? Am I getting? getting are you getting feedback right now? Yeah. This is the best of my ability. I will attempt to edit it out on the off chance that I can't deal with it. Why don't we hold anywhere. on? Why don't we try this? Well, I think it's because the power is going through your laptop, and so it's just picking up on the power input. It. Well, it, I can use my. I can, I can use my. People. I can use my headset audio. Well, we can see if that'll work. Okay. Me swap. They're gonna. They're gonna see a change in quality here. That's fine. That's fine. They'll be. They'll be all right. So the Illuminati. Okay. The Illuminati, right? They said, hey, we gotta make people eat other animals. I probably already said that. We'll figure it out in post. <laughs> it's been a solid, like, six or seven minutes. Anyway, um, so I said, hey, what are we gonna do? Like, what's a good animal to make people eat? Uh, and you see, Bill, Bill the cow, 
uh, which was really kind of odd. Anyway, Bill was like, hey, chickens. Chickens are another animal. We can just make them make more chickens. It's so much easier. It's so much quicker. It's so painless. People already eat eggs. Chickens. Chicken. And all the other cows in the Illuminati, you know, made it happen. So they sent out word to all the other Illuminati uh, chapters all over the world, and they said, hey, how are we going to do this? So they started a restaurant chain Okay. called chick Phil a you see. Now cows, they're very intelligent creatures, but they can't spell worth a fuck, you see. Look at the spelling of chick fil a Exactly. Uh, and they, you know, but at first it wasn't doing that great. So they were like, hey, what can we do? So they started putting up billboards all over the place and ads and filming their own commercials of ways of telling people to eat more chicken. But like I said, cows can't spell worth a fuck. So it's like C-H-I-K-I-N. Yeah. And usually they would like sign it because they can't really sign their name. You know, what they would do is they would draw a self-portrait of the person who designed the, you know, the the advertisement. Because they couldn't sign it, you know, and obviously they couldn't sign it in Lou Munati. It's a secret organization. Duh. So, they did that. And you want to know what else was a big thing behind the Illuminati? Huh. And Chick-fil-A. Guess what uh, the majority of farmers' uh, religious affiliations are, Derry? Christian? Christians. That's right. So the Illuminati started a chicken fast food chain. It had to be fast so they could get everybody to do it. Chicken fast food chain based on Christianity because, you know, obviously, you know, that's all, that's sort of what they knew because the farmers that were raising the cows were into that. So it's kind of what they were taught, you know, growing up and everything. And they heard the farmers singing songs. So they based their fast food chain with Christian background. To try to get people to eat more chicken so less cows would be led to slaughter. I am... I am too fucked up to process this. <laughs> the only no, 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 this no, shit no. makes way too much sense. Also, I just realized that I'm, I'm coming. coming through my headset mic. And yeah. from where I've been smothering myself with Todd. Who is a chicken, by the way? The chickens are fighting back. You'll hear about the cockatoo clan here in a minute. Uh... <laughs> What? But me smothering myself is not really doing anything to help from the clearing of my throat, and I apologize. Uh, well, the cockatoo clan? Oh yeah, man. Uh, hold the story. I gotta pee. I'm gonna run and pee real quick. I'm gonna finish this bottle. Oh yeah, do it, man. Let me, uh, let me crack into my last one. Let me finish this one and crack into my last one. I'll finish this one. Um, I'm gonna go pee real quick. I tried to be as quiet as I could, so I hope that you had to edit that, <laughs> that you keep that in, my man. <sighs> Alright, everyone. So I just realized that the audio is coming from my headset mic. And Derry, that is for you as well. Alright, now the Cockatoo Clan. Everyone. This is story time with Alex Wilson. The Cockatoo Clan. It's a very deceiving name. Because chickens are devious. Yes, that is right. I said it. Chickens are devious. Now, the reason why it's called the Cockatoo Clan is because they didn't want everybody to know. You see, they were like, we can't have everybody knowing that we're chickens. Because then they'll think that we're trying to compete and get people to eat burgers and beef stuff because... You know, we're chickens and we don't want people eating any chickens. You see, they're trying to keep humans unaware of this whole war that's going on. Because obviously if America gets involved, you know, and sticking their nose in business where it doesn't belong, there's going to be problems. You know? What are you on about now? We're talking about the Cockatoo Clan and how they're, disgu they're, they're chickens disguised. They're chickens disguised uh, saying that they're the Cockatoo Clan. Okay. You know, they're cocks. Yeah. They're not cockatoos. Okay. You see, they're trying to keep the, the feud between the Cockatoo Clan and Chick-fil-A on the DL. Okay. Or, and the Illuminati. 
Um, so, the Cockatoo Clan, you see, they kind of got a leg up on, on the Illuminati because uh, there were already burger places in business, okay. like, Mac, like McDonald's and Burger King. Yeah. And stuff like that. And obviously, beef steaks were a very big thing. Yeah. You see. Um, but what the cockatoo did was they tried to seek peace with the Illuminati. Uh, here, fairly recently, actually, uh, because they found out that the cockatoo clan, as well as the Illuminati, both have a common enemy. Guess who it is, Derry? Pigs. Plants. Plants? That's right. That's why, if you go to certain fast food restaurants now, you'll find, like, for example, at Burger King, the Impossible Whopper. A plant-based Whopper. Oh, God. This is... Oh, God. <laughs> I'm getting... Oh, God. This, this, this is probably going to be the first episode that I'm, like, hard hard zonked out of my mind because this is this is getting so deep dude it is deep it is deep dead ass <laughs> dead ass <laughs> everyone at home please we're talking about the stupid shit this shit's getting some real tinfoil hat shit man dude everyone at home please google this right now please god please google this right now it's a thing oh my god <laughs> um so got the impossible whopper what have i been seeing ads for on my youtube videos impossible chicken nuggets yeah that shit looks disgusting exactly but they're trying to band together over this long feud that's been going on for a long time you see we're finally seeing peace and that's why us humans are seeing plant-based meat options you see because the vegetarians they've already grown wise to this the vegans grown wise to all of this mess you see they just may not realize it it's, it's like something in their blood like this is something like a long time ago like one of their family members must have gotten this feud and like it stayed in their blood and it's a genetic memory that's resurfaced and they're like i don't want to eat meat or any animal products now you see this is serious shit dairy but i like steak i like steak too i also like chicken you see, I'm a firm believer that we should um, fight against them because the two the two groups I, I fear are going to try to rise up against mankind, and I can't have it. That's why I eat as much chicken and beef as I can. Someone's got to. Exactly. I'm already one of them, and if you're one of them, that's two people. Exactly, and as I recently found out, um, the reason why there's nothing to do with pigs is because uh, pigs are one of the few animals, uh, which I, I, I was listening to an episode, I was wrong. Animals, a lot of animals, don't experience joy while they're having sex, uh, but one of the few animals that do experience pleasure is pigs. You see, that's why pigs don't have a clan. They're like, yeah, we'll fucking keep making babies as long as I got to fuck, you know. <laughs> as long as... As long as I get my rocks off, you can eat me for dinner. Good job, boys. Exactly. Oh. <laughs> Do you not believe oh me? This, this, wow. Holy God. Because, like, I, this is going to be something, like, all jokes aside, someone's gonna take this shit seriously. They're gonna start looking over their shoulders for like cows just sitting up on billboards painting shit, eat more chicken. Derry, you had better be looking over your shoulder. They're after me. Now that I know the secrets, they'll be after me next. Yes. Yes. I had to get this medium out. I had to get the story out, man. Like, I pose as a podcaster, but I'm a reporter for serious issues. <laughs> All 34 oh, of our subscribers need to hear this. <laughs> Alex Wilson going live. I'm deep within the tombs right now of the Illuminati. We found old Bessie. That's her human given name. 
<laughs> That's the Grandmaster's name of the Illuminati. Well, you see, well, you see, here's the thing. Uh, we actually can't pronounce uh, her real name. Uh, the best that I could guess is it's Moo with 16 O's. Uh, but you see, 14 <laughs> O's is actually a very common name. Oh. Yes. Also. <laughs> dude, I'm so happy with my fucking skills. <laughs> If I cut out, if I cut out all that talk that we had earlier, this is gonna, if we were to end this podcast now, it'd be like an hour long. <laughs> dead ass. Uh, dead oh ass. Oh my god. It's, oh my gosh. Dude, you and I, like, I love this. Uh, also, by the way, everyone listening, I need you to do me a favor. Um... We haven't talked about it in a while, uh, but please join the Discord. We've had a I phenomenal have, day in the Discord today. I have fixed the link. I'm no longer dumb. Because the, the, the original link was an expiring link that expired literally the day after I made it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it literally, because I was like, I was like, you know, we have a bunch of subscribers. You would have thought that someone would have joined the Discord by now. And I looked at it, I was like, wait a minute. I took a closer look, and so I looked at the the logs, the audit logs for the for the invites, and it said expired, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> no. This is like episode four that I realized this, and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, uh, which it happens, man. We're learning. Um, We're learning. But yeah, join the Discord. Also, if any of you are fans of Destiny... Uh, and gameplay YouTube once you finish this episode of course then you need to look up uh, Marshix uh, is it Marsh? I think it's Marshix yeah Marshix uh, guy joined our server he's pretty cool he told us to drink water for a drink suggestion and I say no oh god his mic his mic has been broken There you are. Welcome back. It's actually in my headset mic that this was coming through. Yeah, because I had to switch it because of the, the charging of the laptop. Because for some reason your microphone doesn't like that. Yeah, I actually thought that it was coming through my actual laptop, but I was incorrect. Uh, but well, be sure to it, check. It is coming through the laptop just because of the, the, the plug-in. Which is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's dumb electronic stuff. Well, I was meaning, like, the audio being picked up by that microphone that's built into the laptop, rather than the microphone right. built into my headset. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, be sure to check out Marshix on YouTube. Uh, he's a really cool dude. Uh, he has a whole bunch of handy, uh, Destiny videos. Be sure to watch as many of them as you can. Uh, obviously after you watch and listen to the five o'clock reboot duh uh but you know after you finish duh. your drinking game do what i was quoting billy eyelash who's billy eyelash billy eyelash who's billy eyelash oh that's it's an artist. I'm 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 just I'm just fucking with you. I'm a oh, bad guy. I was like I was like what? <laughs> yeah, I was just dicking with you. <laughs> I'm evil. Oh, so my my room, the the office in which I recorded is now freezing cold. I'm gonna explain to you why. So I I think I told you about this. Uh, the PC that I own is a. Uh, Thermal Take Tower 900, huge PC. I have an AIO attached to the, the processor, and for the longest time since it's been installed, I had the fans blowing the hot air out in my face this entire time, and I've been wondering why the room gets so hot, right? And just from like recording, the room gets super hot. I switched the fans, I flipped them. I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, oh, buddy. So now the hot air is blown out of the top of the PC instead of 
into my face because it pulls the cold air through the radiator through the top of the fans so it blows the heat up instead of into my face i discovered this literally after having this computer for i think two two years a year and a half maybe after this long i realized that i needed to flip the fans oh buddy golf clap for you the five o'clocker yeah. clap the five o'clocker golf clap the drink I, I, the I clinking of like, glasses the clinking of glasses because i was like i was like this is ridiculous how hot this gets this is an aio it should not run hot and i was like what's going on with this so i flipped the fans and now it's freezing cold in my room do you have a blanket i'll be okay because usually i had to open like my window i had fans and all that i don't need them i don't need them i don't need them anymore how crazy is that well all well, because I gracious. flipped three fans. Well, there you go. I need to build me a PC at some point. I will help you. I Please do. Building PCs. I don't know anything about yeah. PCs. But I actually uh, plan to... Oh, that's going to be hell for you uh, in post. I actually plan to build uh, a PC... Uh, in order for me to uh, stream and work on, uh, you know, help work on the gaming videos for the five o'clocker gaming. The gaming. Yeah. Uh, also, didn't you? Did you mention that you have a capture card that you aren't using? Yes, I will have to find that and see if it still works. And if it does, I will happily just give it to you. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, actually, let me look it up right now for any of our fans who in the unlikely event are thinking about getting into YouTube, which by the way, if you're thinking about getting into YouTube, I can send it. Um, you know, Derry and I, we are having a blast every week, which we talked about in the episode that released two weeks ago, uh, about how we talk about how much we enjoy this every week. Uh, and we were like, I don't care. We were very unapologetic. But dead ass, um, it is tons of fun. If you want to get into YouTube, please do. Uh, just be sure to tell everyone. But who inspired you? Just let them know. Sell them at the 5 o'clock reboot, sent you. Because I'm sure you've probably got more followers than we do. <laughs> probably. <laughs> <laughs> like we we would like to thank those two idiots who drank for our entertainment the five o'clock reboot and then none of them follow us dude capture cards are fucking expensive yes they are and i i, I should still have mine and if i do I'll, I'll give you mine you can use it because i don't have a console i have my pc so i would not be needing to use it for anything else now, Elgato is a good one, but there are cheaper ones. Elgato has a software that you can use for it. It's way better, trust me. Is it a one-time purchase? I mean, yeah. Does it come with the software? You just download the software off the website. It's all free. The only thing that you pay for is the, uh, the capture card. Well, they get their money out of the damn capture card, I'll tell you that. Yeah, it, it was way worth it whenever I bought it because it was it was everything was it was just plug and play. All I had to do was set it to the console that I was using, and it, it worked like a charm. It was beautiful. Uh, I had perfect streaming quality. There was no lag, no buffering, no weird pixelations. It was crisp, crystal clear every single time. Ah, what time do you get up for work? Uh, six forty-five, seven. Shoo, buddy. Well, we did start the podcast kind of late, so I think that this might be a good, a good time, so you can at least get some sleep oh, this, before you have to go to work. This is an excellent time. Also, uh, this kind of works out because uh, it'll be a little bit easier to digest. We only got into like a couple topics tonight. Yeah, it was. What a good episode, though. Honestly, dude, we were this... we were structured as fuck tonight. Good, good. Good drink choice. Very good drink choice. Thank Very you. Good. So, Alex, what would you, what would you rate 
our McKinsey's Black Cherry Hard Cider on the 5 o'clock scale. Using the proper 5 o'clock scale that we have now, thanks to our good buddy. Thanks to our good buddy, Noah. Yes. Because I've been Thank like four and a half, four and a quarter. Uh, because <laughs> I'm a jack wagon. He's like, a solid 4 4.5. He was like, a solid 4.30, and I was like, oh damn, he's actually going with time. That's so smart. Noah, I love it's you. It's, and I love it that we were like, on a scale of 1 to 5 o'clock, like, and then we're just like 4.5 this entire time. I know. Um, I'm going to start getting strict. Because That's I have good. a feeling you and I are going to be drinking a whole bunch of shit, and I don't want to be handing out too many yeah. 5 o'clocks too early. Yeah. I'm gonna give this a solid 455. Okay, yeah. I 455. The reason I'm saying 455 is because I do have um, like memories of being like, oh, uh, you know, with the cherry uh, cough syrup, you know, like a yeah. time or two. Um, but everything else, it is super smooth. Um, it is easy to enjoy. Eat, as you can see by how I'm talking now, easy to knock back several um, with yeah, a good you friend were, of yours. You were down in them. Uh, it's they're just so good. They're really good. Um, a good four uh, fifty-five for me. What about you? I'm I'm at like a four fifty, maybe four forty-five, because it does give that hard off uh, cough syrup taste. To and, the, and like the beginning of my mind was like immediately thinking of cough syrup from just the smell, so I immediately went down that route. But these are easy to drink. And they got me pretty messed up pretty quick, <laughs> so I, uh, I I like I like them, but amongst all the ciders that I've had, as I would rank this amongst my top ten, this is not my number one favorite. I understand that, um, but it is really really good. If you guys ever want to get a cider that you can sip on and get from point A to point B real quick, McKenzie's. Black cherry hard cider is the one to go to because it tastes exactly like black cherry. It doesn't taste like a black cherry cider. It tastes like black cherry. Yes. Um, it is a phenomenal drink. If you like the taste of black cherry, um, do yourself a favor. And uh, if you're able to find it, uh, get yourself a sixer. Uh, maybe don't drink as many as I have in a single sitting. Uh, actually, I would oh, recommend really? I would recommend not drinking as many as I have in a single sitting because that is, I believe, classified as binge drinking. But yes, and and here's the thing too: before we started this, I ate I ate a lot of food, and I still got pretty jacked. So uh, I did not eat a lot of food. Um, how many have you? How many have you drank? I only drank three. I've. I'm gonna drink the other three during post-production i just finished my fifth i told you i could handle five and be able to work tomorrow and function and by god i had my five there you go now derek i gotta ask you this and i've been waiting i have not asked you this in such a way but now i'm drunk enough and not only am i drunk enough i also am in the position and it is that time of the episode that I can actually ask you, Derry, what are you wearing? I am Walter Hartful White in the episode of Breaking Bad, where he walks in to the supermarket on his quote-unquote fugue state, where he is standing in front of the produce aisle. Absolutely. God is my witness witness me people but naked oh my god zooted butt naked 100% oh my god this is phenomenal now Derry I'm gonna need you to do me a favor and this you can cut this out if you want to I mean whatever you want to do I'm I'm in a position where I'm <laughs> not gonna care uh, and whenever I listen to this I'm probably gonna think it's funny we need to find a bell <laughs> Like, we need to find a bell sound whenever we are of the same mind. Um, because, believe it or not, Terry, you've only had three and you're zooted butt naked. 
Yes, sir. Like zooted fucking ass, butt naked, like butthole puckered. Pee pee shrivel because I'm in the produce aisle and it's refrigerated. Ooh. Well, you see, that's a that's a that's a very special type of butt naked. Now, the the oh, yeah. type of butt naked that I am, sir. Because everybody at home, I want you to know that I this Mackenzie's black cherry hard cider has allowed me to achieve the coveted, the ever so sought after, the sacred, the five o'clock sacred, but naked, zooted, but naked. That's correct. That is correct. ZBN to the third power, zooted but naked. ZBN cubed, if you will, because it's three dimensional, ZBN three di three three dimensional, as is my penis. That is out for everybody to see, and this is not shriveled up because I've, I see I've had five of these fuckers. I've had five of these big old big old fellers, five of these Mackenzies, and Lord above, I am feeling absolutely phenomenal. This isn't like the kind of drunk where I'm like. Oh my god, I hate my life. Or this is this isn't the kind of drunk where I'm like, I just want to text somebody because I'm bored. This is the kind of drunk where I'm like, I could chill and have a good time. Yeah, you so know, like, I'm not I'm not falling over myself drunk. I am um, feeling it. I'm feeling it really heavy. I could probably fall over drunk if I so chose. <laughs> I, I I told you about the seventy proof moonshine that I had. That was really bad that is like that's not even zooted but naked that's like so naked my skin is off muscle is exposed but naked oh yes oh yes but this is like I, I'm, I'm slightly uncomfortable because I'm in the produce aisle and I'm definitely not flattering because it's cold there but I'm there yes I am zooted but naked oh yes I am so naked, but unlike the current climate and situation, I'm not naked and shriveled up in the cold, buddy. I am shriveled up in the sand, as Jimmy Buffett would have it. Shri uh, not shriveled up. I am hanging low in the sand, dick at max length and soft. Having a good time. This I'm getting sunburnt slowly, but do I care? Absolutely not, because I see I feel the sand on my face, and I feel the salt on my face from the water, and there are people going, there are people walking around, and they're saying, "Hey, that guy has a nice cock. I'm not going to call the cops." That is the position that I'm in right now. Okay, it is a blissful heaven that I have reached. Exactly. Kronk walks by and he's like, "Nice cock," and Isma is like, "Kronk." And he's not listening to her because my cock is so mesmerizing right now. It's perfect length. It's perfect length. Good girl. <laughs> nice guy. That's 45 degree angle. 85 degree angle. 85 and degree angle. the hairs a bit, but we'll work on it. It'll fit my asshole. <laughs> It'll fit. <laughs> no spit, neither. I mean, like, we're talking... We're talking... But Kronk but has... He has to have a gaping asshole. <laughs> oh, God. Well, I mean, he's with Yzma, so... Dude, she shoved the handle of that knife. She kept on her thigh up in there. But anyway... Um... Anyway, the, I am so butt naked. And it is so phenomenal. Like, I am unashamed butt naked. I am standing in a crowd. And... Do I give a fuck about my stretch marks from my tubby body? No. No. Those are out for the world to see. Exactly. And everyone, that is why you should drink Mackenzie's cherry, uh, Black Cherry Hard Cider. Okay? We are not sponsored. No. We don't get money for none of this shit. We're doing it for free because we love you guys and we love each other. By God. We love the drink. We by love God. the drink. By God. And we would like to thank you so much aggressively we aggressively thank you so thank much you. for listening <laughs> to this installment of the five o'clock reboot uh if you are a guest and you're not subscribed be sure to go ahead and subscribe uh and like and comment tell us what you think of the episode you know we have our discord in the description be sure to join that bitch 
talk to us. We talk back. Fuck yeah. We love being within the community. You know, we love, you know, we love all of you. And we thank you so much. And I don't have anything else to add. Do you, Derry? No, you pretty much covered it. Just talk to everyone about it. Show us to your buddies. Show us to the weird homeless man living under the bridge. Absolutely. It, and if anything else, show it to your mom. She'll probably like it. Oh yeah, your mother will love it. Five o'clock reboot supported by mothers. All right, my friends. And with that, I thank you all so much. And I hope that y'all have a phenomenal week. And I hope that we have started your week off right. And you know what? We'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye.